Who group? <laughs> How is everyone this evening? Hello, hello. It is Sunday, April the 14th, and we are here 8 p.m. together, and we're going to talk about puckering. Woo! Who hates puckering as much as I do? Me. <laughs> How is everyone this evening? I am here full of sugar and energy and shouldn't be, but I am. So I wanted to say good evening to everyone again. Thank you for joining us here at the Hoop Group this evening at the Baby's Booty Channel. My name is Eve and I am here to answer your embroidery and crafting related questions, whatever it is that you have going on in your embroidery studio. We're trying to expand our embroidery business horizon so i am joining you guys this evening with a large group already and we're gonna start by saying hey miss cushionberry how are you today <laughs> sheila cushionberry is in here with us today patrick quinlan hello my dear so crafty says hi even fellow hoopsters that's the spirit i love it we have Diana Henderson says, hello, everyone in Eve. Hello to you, Diana. Patty O say, yo, <laughs> how are you? Bronnie's rep says, hi, everyone. Patty Murphy says, hi, from Arkansas. Hello, how are you? Hopefully the weather down there wasn't too tragic for you. Cheryl Malone says, hello, hashtag who group. Hi to you. Cheryl, how are you today? Sheila Chan says, good evening. Carol Coleman says, good evening. Joni Thurman also joins us and says, hello, everyone. Hey, Miss Joni. <laughs> Peggy Dew, hello from Texas. Well, hello to you as well. I don't recall seeing your name in our chat. Thank you for joining us this evening. Barbara Nance says, good evening all. Hello, hello, and the infamous Debbie Kid. Hey, love, how are you today? Thank you for joining us this evening as well. Lupe Ruiz, hello, how are you? <laughs> Thank you for being here this evening. Dawn says, happy Sunday Eve and Baby's Booty family. Excited. Your favorite time of Sundays. Mine too, girl. I'm trying to tell you I love coming in here and having a good time. Patrick, I'm going to tell you, it has been a uh, swamp this week. And it's not swamp with work. It's been swamp with personal things. So I've been in and out of emails, kind of like sporadic so i'm gonna double check your email uh again i don't recall seeing it i'm sure i got it but i don't recall seeing it so i'll check again this evening all right sorry about that karen caldwell well hey love how have you been welcome thank you for joining us this evening maria says hi even everyone the junk drawer of no sense and know it all well i have about four junk drawers <clears throat> excuse me so Thank you for joining me this evening. I have a lot of love for you. <laughs> Says, love your videos. They're so helpful. Thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you letting me know that. It's always uh, a wonderful thing to know that you are contributing to the community in a positive way. And that's the whole point of the Baby's Booty Channel. We want to be beneficial. So, Mitra Beasley, haven't seen you in here before. You says, hello from Nancy 3 a.m. I'm the one who watches at 3 a.m. Okay, so you changed your name on here? <laughs> well, welcome. Sorry, it's three in the morning. No, my goodness. I was up till three, let's see, last night. And it wasn't fun, but it was because I had a nap earlier in the day. And well, actually it was a sugar crash, y'all. I haven't been doing well with my sugar, I ain't gonna lie. And yesterday was particularly rough. So I crashed, right, and knocked out. That's one of those instances where your sugar gets so high or you take in too many carbs and so you just get super sleepy and you can't help it. And it's like you got to go to sleep. And that's what happened yesterday, right? So I slept longer than I should have for my nap and ended up not, I mean, I was up 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I can't remember what time it was. I woke up and had to get up, clean up the kitchen, cooking and going on till three in the morning. I hate doing that, y'all. I need my sleep. <laughs> I need my beauty sleep. Can you see my hair? I needed that beauty sleep. I probably my hair probably would have been cuter if if I had had that. <laughs> but at any rate, that 3 a.m. viewership is not fun. And I do get on YouTube 3 in the morning when I can't sleep. So thank you for taking your 3 a.m. time to be with us. I appreciate it. Unless you work at night and it's all right for you to be up. <laughs> 
I appreciate you. Shamina Stewart says, hello, even everyone. Hello to you too. Nicole, Nicholas Gittins, well, hi. How are you? Welcome. Haven't seen your name. Hi from beautiful Barbados. Love your shows. Well, thank you. And thank you for letting us know that you have been in here. I'm glad you spoke up and said hello because Barbados is definitely a go-to spot. We'll have to come and visit. <laughs> Marilyn Ray says, evening, even everyone. Elaine Dickerson says, hi, even everyone from Mississippi. Hello to the both of you. Pecola Chase. Well, hi, Pecola. Ta Yata Hey from New Mexico and Navajo land. Well, welcome from Navajo land. I don't remember seeing your name. So welcome to our live chat this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Gaston is always love having you here. She says, hashtag who group. Hello from the STL. We love St. Louis as well. Tina Brown. Hello from Michigan. Hello to you as well. Don't recall seeing your name or Harriet Boyer. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Anessa Williams, good evening. Man, there's a lot of new faces in here. I love it. I love it. Nancy Fowl says, hello, everyone from Iowa. One shorty diva. Hello, even everyone. Haven't seen you either. This is so cool. Thank y'all for joining us this evening. This is what's up. Please engage in the chat. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in the comment section below. We like answering questions. We also love interaction here on the live channel because I mean, frankly, the only reason I'm live is for y'all. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't, you know, be, it'd be kind of boring if I was doing this just to hear myself talk. I'm not a fan of that. So, <laughs> so please definitely let us know if you have any questions or extra comments. All right. Yamake Creation says, good morning, Eve, and all of you out there. It's 2 a.m. in France. Wow, you set your alarm so as not to miss the show. How awesome is that, y'all? You know what? The baby's booty, we are doing awesome things around here. And when we can help around the world, that is phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? This is amazing. So welcome. We have the largest hoop group ever, right? <laughs> and the best. We got the best two group, y'all. Y'all, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Love all of you. Thank you, man. And then we got mom of 12 children in here. Haven't seen your name either. Hello, welcome. Deborah Turner says, you're new. Just bought your first embroidery machine. Well, Deborah Turner and signature lady as well. New being in here. She says, me too, Deborah. Before was just working on a vintage sewing machine. Well, we're gonna introduce the both of you if you haven't been here before to something that we do on this channel. If you get a new machine, whether it's an embroidery machine, sewing machine, serger, cutter, some type of equipment that helps benefit you in your business, especially when we're, we're talking about a investment type purchase, which is pretty large, then we ring the bell to celebrate your new baby. All right, so generally we name our babies around here like My Six Needle Embroidery Machine's name is Blessing and we have several other hoop group members who have names for their babies as well. You don't have to name your baby, but in order to have the bell ring, you have to let me know that you got a new machine and what the make and model of it, it well, not necessarily the model, but that it's like a brother PE 770, for instance. And that way we can ring the bell and celebrate your purchase properly. All right. So definitely let me know what your new equipment is because the bell is ready to yell all right <laughs> and if you got your volume turned up you may want to turn it down when it's time to celebrate the new machines <laughs> um let us see so crafty says i was up with you and saw your video laughing out loud well i'm glad somebody saw it because i'm trying to tell y'all three in the morning is a fool glenn f says hi everyone hashtag who group hashtag hoop group to you as well and for those that are in the hoop group please throw in a hashtag hoop group for everyone else that's in here this evening to let them know that we stand united in our embroidery endeavors right <laughs> definitely ethel smith says good evening everyone mom of 12 children says she's joining in from ohio welcome welcome stomping grounds up that way so Mitra Beasley says, I'm using my daughter's phone. Sorry, I'm the Nancy with the daughter from the convention in Charlotte. And my daughter complains <laughs> about me watching all night. That's right. Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad she got you in because I remember that was an issue. We were trying to get your 
phone to work because you were watching on the TV and you couldn't watch on the phone. So I'm glad at least she's letting you <laughs> use the phone to watch the live. So welcome. Thank you. I was going through those pictures the other day. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. Yeah, I had a blast meeting you guys and that was a lot of fun. I can't wait till we get together again. Dorothy Gaston says, welcome to all first timers. Welcome. Yay. I ought to have a little, well, we'll have to let Will ring the bell, get a bell like Will's and we'll ring that one for new people. <laughs> Debbie D. Hey, hi, even everyone. Hello. Hello. Signature lady. All right, you guys, we got a bell ringer here. She got a brother Essie. 625 which is an awesome new machine color screen if i'm not mistaken so you're gonna have a lot of fun with your four by four baby congratulations ma'am and welcome to your new machine Woo! yes yes <laughs> it's spanning our embroidery horizons congratulations on your purchase ma'am lupe ruiz says still thinking on the name for your machine it takes time you got to get the temperament get the feel for it sometimes and then sometimes you pull it out the box and you be like you look like a penelope i think that's what we'll name you <laughs> so sometimes you have the name right away and sometimes not Liz Boys, I recently found you just purchased a used entrepreneur PR100E, your first multi needle. Excited to learn! Congratulations! Ooh, look at these new babies in here today. Multi needle, holla! <laughs> that is an achievement. The multi needles are fun, especially when you can not have to change colors with every color stop you in the big leagues now girlfriend it is a lot of fun <laughs> pe 1000 e i knew what you were saying but i read it the way you said it i apologize deborah turner says mine is a baby lock verve but now i wish i had got bigger i know but guess what you still can do a lot with your verve congratulations verve <laughs> welcome to the group miss deborah turner's verb baby lock might i add those are nice machines i must say and justin is in the house hello justin welcome thank you for joining us this evening <laughs> all right kathy says hello everyone from florida hi florida in the house pearl lucas says hi everyone hashtag hoop group will just got in from his craft show where he made thousands and thousands of dollars at least we're pretty sure he did let's hope so Ethel Smith says, hashtag hoop group, everyone and new members. Marilyn Ray is in here saying hoop group. <laughs> Debbie D says, she hope you did great too. We'll see. We're, we're, see, best craft show. That's what's up. That's what's up. We knew you hit the thousands mark. We knew it. We knew it. I could feel it. I could feel it. <laughs> Karen Caldwell says, you got a new sublimation printer, Epson F WF7720, and I think I'll name it Frankie. <laughs> Well, guess what, Karen Caldwell? Tell Frankie he got his cousin over here. I have a new printer as well. I hadn't told anybody yet because I'm still deciding what route I'm going to go with the sublimation paper. And I kind of wanted to sublimate on something first and have it all set up so that I could show it to you guys. So I kind of spilt the beans a little bit early. But I've had the printer for about a month now and I just haven't done anything with it yet. Mainly because my studio is completely wrecked. It's super junky. Um, I have fabric everywhere and I'm trying to clean out. I'm actually de-stashing in the, in the process of de-stashing. And, um, I kind of want a local de-stash. I really don't want to have to ship anything because sometimes shipping items end up costing more than dang on somebody just coming by and picking it up. So I kind of want to do local, but anyway, I'm still deciding on all of that. And then I got hit with spring fever last week, right? So the sun was finally out for a change. It was good and warm. It was not hot, but it was warm enough and it was just beautiful. <clears throat> I'm usually not affected by pollen or anything like that. The only thing I'm allergic to is cats and dogs and dust or whatever. But um, I felt so good. I was like, okay, I'm gonna get out and I'm going to do some crafts for myself. So I made, I painted some potted plants, um, plant pots, and then I made brick books. And if you've never heard of brick books before, you can go check me out on Instagram. I'm on Instagram as the baby's booty, just like you see down below in my webpage. Um, so you can check me out there and you'll see pictures of the brick books that I've made. 
um, and I made glass wind time. So we had a lot of fun planting plants and getting, you know, things decorated for the front of the house. And I had considered doing uh, a pillow tonight on live, embroidering a pillow that would sit on the bench in front of my house. But I changed my mind. I thought puckers was more of an issue that a lot of people have. And as a matter of fact, I've gotten several emails this week, ironically, about puckers. Um, and how to eliminate them. And then I was hit with an issue with puckers this week, even though I wasn't the one doing the embroidery, right? So it was, it seems like, uh, it seemed like a really good topic that I don't think is covered enough. Uh, so I decided to do that for the live today instead of the pillows, because frankly, I need to uh, change my a train of thought from doing for myself back to working in the studio so I can get cleaned up and get my orders done and you know because I'm slightly backed up with orders and uh trying to get all of that taken care of and I have a private uh what is it called craft show that I have to prepare for so it's just a lot going on but I did take a week off for myself so that being the case um I thought puckers would work better than the pillows. So we'll see how that goes anyways, hopefully. <laughs> Carol Coleman says, hi to Will. Cindy bon Bonskowski. Hello, Bonskowski. Oh, I did say it right. Hoop group, hi from Denton, Texas. Haven't seen your name before because otherwise I would have been able to say it properly by now. <laughs> but welcome from Denton, Texas. Thank you for joining us this evening. I really appreciate you being here. Deborah Turner says you're going to the embroidery show in Owensboro, Kentucky in May. I do still have intentions of going to that show. We'll see. I'll have to clear that with Mr. Baby's Booty to make sure that I can go um, and that we'll have a little getaway, so to speak, and have a place to stay and all that cool jazz because I don't like going to shows and only going for the one day. I like to go for the multiple days, but I don't know why. It's just a lot of fun. Um, and there's a couple of vendors there that I really want to get back to. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh-oh, looks like I'm buffering. I apologize on that. Mom of 12 children says, what ideas do you have for Brother SE 425 4x4? I mostly make planner felties, which is a good idea. Excellent idea, actually. And in the hoop coasters, I have a single Futura 6x10 hoop, but don't use it often because it jams up. Excuse me, and bird's nest, so I mostly use my 4x4. All right, so um, mom of 12 children, what I'm going to suggest to you is check out a friend's website. Her website is designsbylittlebee.com, designsbylittlebee.com. And let me see if I have, okay, there we go. So I'm gonna switch this over so that you can see it. And I've added it to the bottom of the screen over here down below designsbylittlebee.com. She has a ton, ton of embroidery projects that are in the hoop that you can do with your four by four machine. If you're looking for craft type stuff to do in the hoop, it's a lot of fun. And we also, um, baby bibs is something really simple. Onesies is something really simple, which we'll be discussing tonight um, in regards to puckering. Um, we also, let's see, there's a lot of stuff actually that you can do with the four by four machine. Also, I did a show last, no, 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 no. I uploaded three videos this past week, um, in regards to the repositional hoop. And that's another option for your four by four machine. If you're interested in embroidering on larger areas, such as a baby blanket or, um, <clears throat> a jacket or a shirt, <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I don't know what I got going on. I got a tickle in my throat. So excuse me. But that is what I would suggest with the 4x4 because I have a lot of fun with my 4x4. So excuse me, y'all. I apologize. Patty Murphy says, another new machine addition since I was here last. A brother luminaire. Are you serious? Go ahead, old girl. And a baby lock triumph surger to go along with your tin needle you're so blessed yes ma'am we're gonna ring the bell to let you know <laughs> how wonderful a blessing that is Woo! congratulations on your new babies <laughs> all right let's see what other babies we got in here and oh my gosh i'm buffering again i think um 
the heat in here isn't helping either because I don't have anything else running in the background because it's kind of warm in here today. I should have cut the air on. So Will says, you wish you made thousands. Come on, man. You know you did good. <laughs> Eartha Lewis says, hi, Eve and everyone from Port Allen, Louisiana. It's always a pleasure to have you here this evening. Um, let us see. You need the distashing. I don't know that you need this distashing, Will. I mean, Justin, I'm sure you don't need it. <laughs> I got so much stuff. It's stupid. Maria says, Mama 12, you probably have, oh yeah, that's right. You probably have some thread stuck in the tension disc or down in the bobbin case. Clean out your thread tension disc. Okay, so I did mean to mention that because you did say something about your other machine, um, the 6x10, the Singer Futura. Now, I do know that there are several folks that have issues from time to time with the Singer. Okay, so first thing I would suggest, in addition to um in addition to what maria suggested i would suggest that you change your needle okay so change your needle first get you a fresh brand new needle and try that then clean out your bobbin case and then run i've heard dental floss now correct me if i'm wrong with anyone else wax dental floss and run that through uh, where your thread would go and pull it all the way through uh, to clean out that track going through um, your embroidery thread path and make sure that there's no thread stuck in there. Also, uh, what you could do is a tension test as well. And I do have a video of that on my YouTube page. If you look under the playlist, uh, under embroidery machines, I believe there should be a video there on how to check your thread tension. The only thing is you'll have to refer to your user's manual to see how to adjust the tension on the top of your machine. Um, you also can look at possibly having it serviced. Take it to your local sewing machine and vacuum repair place and have them check your bobbin, your bobbin case. If it's separate, um, they can check the tension on that and make sure that that's set correctly. Um, there's any number of things that could be causing that, um, and it won't take much to get it fixed. I'm sure it won't, uh, but definitely have it looked at because you don't want to have a baby just sitting there. <laughs> Shamina Stewart says, Eve, I'm ringing the bell for you. New sublimation nation. I know, right? I'm so excited about it. I really am. Um, I even went to a local, uh, vendor that's doing sublimation. I'm going to have to tell y'all about that in a second. Make sure that I'm not missing anything. Uh, Will said, take a week off. I wish. I know, right? I kind of forced my hand on that, though. I had to, unfortunately, because it was just a lot going on here mentally. <laughs> and I needed that time to myself to get some things done that I needed done uh, to make sure. I mean, because how can you be the baby's booty and have folks come into the house to pick up their, you know, work and stuff that you've done and the house looks a wreck outside you know so it had to look really nice and get things together there's still a lot i need to do like i need to paint and stuff but it's kind of hard to paint when it won't stop raining y'all <laughs> so hopefully we can get all of that done justin awesome self reminds us all to not please to not forget to hit the like button and if you're not already a subscriber please subscribe i would greatly appreciate it thank you very very much all right lupe says thanks to the videos this week i was finally able to make your first larger design sweet that is what's up shamina thank you for letting me know that you're not experiencing buffering or patrick good because i am also following the chat on my phone so that i don't miss anything and my phone was buffering so it could be just me <laughs> but um I want to really quick, before we get into the puckering, let you guys know a couple of things, really cool things that happened uh, actually this week. First thing is, it's crazy, and I'm gonna try and look this up while I tell y'all about it. It's crazy how, you know, through the years, and I've tried to, and I'm sorry, I'm going off on something entirely different and going all the way around Robin Hood's barn to make a point, but, um, it's funny how when you grow up, you have cousins and relatives that you're, you're close to, but then as time goes on, that closeness goes away and they move away and all the other jazz and you don't see them um, anymore for a while. Well, 
I just so happened to come across one of my cousins that as a younger person, and I'm saying about 14, 15 years old, I was, and she might've been about 10 or 11, something along those lines. She's not too terribly far behind me. And we, they used to say we looked just alike, even when we were younger. And she's my, my grandfather and her grandfather were brothers. So that's how we're related. We're not like super, super close, um, relative wise, but close enough. And people said that we used to look just alike. And it's funny, um, you know, thinking about it now. All right. So at any rate, I was going to my local vinyl supplier to pick up vinyl. And as I'm coming out of the vinyl supply place, um, I see this lady get out of the car and I'm like, dang, she looks familiar to me. And, and she got closer. I was like, is that who I think I said, Chrissy? And she turned and looked at me like, um, hi. And I'm like, hi, how are you? And I gave her this biggest hug. And she was like, um, hi, how are you? And I was like, I am fine, cousin. And she stepped back and she looked at me and she was like, oh my God. And gave me the hugest hug because she finally recognized who I was. Yo, why do I have a cousin that I ain't seen in years out there doing vinyl too? She's out there being just as creative. She just opened a new store um, not far from here. And because uh, I'm in North Carolina, she's just across the line in South Carolina. And it, I just thought that was the most amazing thing how, and I do have other relatives that are just as creative. I have another cousin that's a little close, like my mom and her mom are sisters. And she is um, starting to do vinyl and make her own shirts and stuff and selling some shirts and stuff too, which is really cool. But just that far apart in relation and here she is doing vinyl as well. So I thought that was really neat. And I don't know, does, does, do we look alike? Does that look like me? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> it's funny though, because when we were younger, we really looked alike, you know, but that that's my Chrissy. I hadn't seen her in forever and I'm hoping she's watching. And uh, I don't know if she is, but if she is, I give her a shout out because I'm very proud of her and her new business. I thought that was really, really cool. She has a location now, not necessarily a new business. She's been doing it, but now she has a location. So I thought that was really cool. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention is um, be nosy, you guys. I want to, um, some folks may not, this may be out of their comfort zone. One of the things that I started doing on Instagram a couple of weeks ago is roughly every other day, I was posting how to expand your business, okay? And things that you can do to expand your business. And I get that question quite frequently. People are like, well, I have this embroidery machine, but I don't know how to get business. Okay, you, there are plenty of things you can do. One of the things you could do is go to your local dry cleaners because they don't usually have embroidery there, but people bring their dress shirts, for instance, and they'll ask the dry cleaners, hey, I want a monogram on my cuffs or on my collar do you do that and they'll say no sorry i don't do it we'll alter your clothing but we don't embroider it well guess what leave your card <laughs> and then people can call you that they'll refer people to you to do those small embroidery jobs don't I me mean, ask me how i know i get calls from the dry cleaners pretty frequently that's an excellent place to get started and it's small things usually usually it's small things um, every so often I get requests from patches there. Another thing that you can do to expand your business would be to, um, check at your doctor's office, ask them when you go into your doctor's appointments. Hi, do you have any, um, you know, who does your scrubs? Who does all of that jazz? You can ask them, you know, how does that work? Do y'all have anybody that's doing it? Do you need help? That's another way you can get um business let's see what else i had a, a ton of stuff but at any rate one of the things i always suggest is be nosy okay so quick story there's a local mall not too far from charlotte it's in a neighboring city um and that city is relatively smaller than charlotte is and it's you know not quite as uh, affluent as charlotte because charlotte everything is high here now 
But at any rate, the mall kind of isn't doing that well anymore. But at one point it was pretty bustling. And I went in there years ago when I first started doing embroidery. And there's an alterations store in this particular mall. And they had an embroidery machine. And I asked them, I said, do you ever outsource your embroidery? And at the time, the lady says, well, we would, but it depends. What type of embroidery machine do you have? Do you have a multi-needle machine? And at the time, I did not. I only had the small 4x4 machine. And she says, well, the only way we'll outsource is if you have the multi-needle or a commercial machine. And I was like, oh, man. Okay, cool. She said, what we are hiring for in-store if you would like. And the way my mind and mental is set up, I can't work for anybody anymore. That's been ruined. So I was like, I'm sorry, um, you know, I, I can't do um, a regular job where I come in and clock in and all that jazz. It just won't work. So at any rate, <laughs> um, years later, let's fast forward to now. And the alteration shop is still there. But now in the mall, there's a new store. It's called Impressions with a Z. And I was there with my dad. He was going to a completely different store to buy a suit. And as I, you know, I was like, not really wanting to look at those suits. And so I said, well, I'm going to walk around the mall a little bit and found a store just across the hall. First thing I saw was an embroidery machine and it was a Melco. Unfortunately, I'm not very familiar with Melco at all. Um, because mostly here, I mostly hear horror stories about the Melco. Um, uh, but not to say it's a bad machine because it, ha it works for a lot of people and a lot of people use Melco. So I'm not going to bash it in the least little bit. Uh, but I walked in the store and met the manager of the store who is amazing, totally awesome. Um, and I told her that I do vinyl, I do bling, I do, uh, I want to get into sublimation and I'm starting to get into sublimation and they have the huge direct garment printing machine, which of course I was drooling over. And it was funny because I was like, oh man, I want to do the Rick the Garment. She was like, don't buy that. <laughs> don't buy that mess. Just don't even, don't even do it. And I'm like, what? Why would I not do that? And she was like, by the time you pay all those thousands for the machine, then you're paying hundreds for the ink. Um, and sometimes it doesn't print like it should. She was like, now granted, we do need to get, I think it was a conditioner or something for those shirts or whatever. But she said, don't do the direct to garment. She said, as a matter of fact, there's more in sublimation than there is in direct to garment. It, you get better outcome and you make more money with sublimation. The price, you know, difference between the two versus how much you're paying for shirts and supplies and ink and selling it for versus the direct to garment and how much you're paying for ink and supplies and stuff and what you're selling it for price point is completely different and you make more money. So that was cool to find out. Um, but she had questions about embroidery. So it was cool to be able to stop and talk to her and whatnot. They don't offer bling. So now I can offer bling to them, which she's open to. So I thought that was really cool. Ask questions. So when you're out and about, if you come across not a mo not a large chain, like Lids, for instance, is too big of a chain, I wouldn't check with them. But a smaller company that you see in a store or what have you ask questions hey i do vinyl do y'all offer vinyl would you like to offer vinyl or i do sublimation would you like to offer sublimation services to your customers or you know if you are able to work um at a location you can ask them you know can i come in and do part-time maybe learn something because i was kind of interested in going and meeting these people and learning direct the garment and seeing how they do sublimation and stuff like that but it's a good distance from me and eh, you know again the way my mind and the way my mental was set up it i i would have issues with that but at any rate so ask questions that's another way to expand your business and i just wanted to let you know that uh, because it is um definitely something that you can look into to expand your business now i'm gonna go back through this a little bit and um make sure of what we have in the chat and then we'll get into the puckering because we're already at 30 minutes after daphine woodard says hello eve this is your first time doing live chat thanks you're welcome thank you for 
joining us this evening. Will says he's going to bed. You have a good night, Will. Definitely understand that. And we will see him live on Friday. Dorothy Gaston says no buffering with her. I am glad to hear that. Shamina says spoke too soon. The buffering was a delay. Just got it. Okay, well, hopefully it's doing better now. Dorothy Gaston says Chrissy does look like me. We do favor quite a bit. <laughs> Charlie Mitchell, hello, hello. Good evening to you as well. Thank you for joining us. Dorothy Gaston says, do you know how to embroider on socks? And I want to tell you yes. And for whatever reason, oh, there it is. I can show you something that would be helpful. And I think it's on my Amazon store. I'm not 100% sure. And if not, I'll double check and see if it is. And if it's not, I'll add it to it. But this is a tool um, to help you embroider on socks. And it's called a Sock Easy. All right. And I'm going to turn it around so that you can see the picture on the back on how it will help you hold the sock down on your hoop and allow you to embroider designs on your hoop. Now, how much this was, I have no earthly clue. I don't recall because I bought this so long ago um, that, a matter of fact, I think I bought this uh, when I first started doing embroidery. I saw it online and purchased it. But I'll see about posting this in um, the Amazon group, so that uh, my Amazon storefront page, so that you can find it easily. And then hopefully you can use that. But it, it does make it very easy to embroider on socks. I will admit that. Leah, hello, hello. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening. Shamina says you have a question for the cruise. All right. We have every craft imaginable that's going to take place. Have you thought about tumblers? I'm really a huge tumbler in a really huge tumbler group on Facebook. I have passed the word along to the instructors and they would love to be on the cruise and instruct. How do I get their information to you if you decide to have tumblers? Well, first of all, thank you, Shamina, for your question. And thank you for bringing out the cruise because the uh, booking agent says that she's been hearing crickets over the last week or two. <laughs> said that not very many people have been calling as much as before. And our time is going to run out really quickly. We only have a couple of more weeks until the 4th of May. Um, and I'll see if I can't get her to extend it. But what we're trying to do is lock in our rates by May 4th and the deposit for the cruise is only $25. That's, that's the deposit to hold your rate. Okay. You can put down a full deposit of 150 and that will lock in your room, your, your actual cabin that you will be standing, staying in. So that's an option as well. But, um, uh, Hey, Dr. Threads, thank you for joining us this evening. I'm glad to see you in here. As a matter of fact, I needed to call you, but I will do that later. Um, but at any rate with the cruise, um, I have considered tumblers and I'm going to tell you the problem that we're, we're coming up against real quick. One of the problems that we're coming up against, we have one instruct, we have an instructor that's doing vinyl. She's also teaching the silhouette. She's also teaching the brother scan and cut and vinyl all in one type situation. Um, we're bringing on, or the goal is to bring on, uh, scanning cuts and silhouettes so that people can do hands on in the paid classes. Okay. So we're going to have free classes, which is a larger group class, I'm sure. And then we'll have paid classes where people can pay to go to the class. All right. Well, we're only doing a four night cruise and you know what? How many people are in here? We got over 70 people in here. Okay. So let me throw this question out there to you guys. All right. So the first night, which is on a Monday, Monday night, we get on the ship and set sail at 4 p.m. So from 4 p.m. till 8, you're probably going to be settling in on your settling in the cabin or whatever the case may be, getting ready to sail, all that cool jazz, tired because you might have traveled. I don't know. We will be offering, hopefully, if enough people request it, we'll have overnight hotel accommodations really close to the port, if you're interested. If you're interested, let me know. Um, but at any rate, and there's something else I need to let y'all know about that too, but I may have to wait before I announce that. So at any rate, the um, 
idea for the lady that's t the instructor that's teaching brother scan and cut silhouette and vinyl she wants to have her first class the first night the first available night are you willing to have a class that first night from like 4 p.m to 8 p.m time frame maybe from six to eight i don't know does that sound like too much um we definitely wanted to have a get together the first night where we greet and say hi and hugs all the way around and have a really nice time the first night if i can fit that in but if we have the class that's going to be a little bit difficult to do not sure and also depending upon how late folks stay up all right so we got a lot that we're trying to smooth out and iron out with how we're going to lay out the classes and stuff and of course you can't please everybody but my thing is this if you're paying for a class i want you to have the access to the class that you would want to have and i don't want classes to overlap all right so that being said tuesday all day is going to be in the bahamas we'll be at dock we'll be at port in the bahamas for tuesday all day long so some folks might not care whether or not they get to go ashore to visit the bahamas or not i don't know would it be okay to have classes during the time that folks would normally go to shore excursions okay so that's another question for myself I'm okay with not being ashore longer than an hour or two, you know, cause I'm really there for the ship, but that's Tuesday. Wednesday is the private Island where people can get off the boat, go sit on the beach and have a good time. Private Island type thing, all that cool stuff. I'm down for the private Island. I really am. <laughs> now I probably won't be there all day, but I'm really interested in seeing the private Island. I'm really cool. Uh, excited about that. So that's third, uh, Wednesday. So Thursday, all day Thursday, we'll be at sea. So that's a perfect day to have classes because you're not going to be getting off the ship and going anywhere. So we're trying to cram all these classes in during this four-night cruise. And we want to make sure that we're not intruding on someone's uh, a shore excursion schedule. So that's where... You know, we're kind of trying to, I'm trying that because this is all on me. I'm trying to make sure that these classes fit and that everyone has a good time during their classes and you have enough time during your classes. Because look, if you look at it this way, if each class is a two hour class, um, two times four is eight hours. So that's only four classes that we'll be able to have. And right now we have the brother scanning cut cricket um brother scanning cut silhouette sorry and vinyl we're having so what pro we're having so art we're having um so what pro so art we're having um bling rhinestones we're having business business classes so that's five different classes we're having uh in brilliance that's six classes so, I mean, right now, and that's not all the classes. I'm just forgetting some because I didn't bring my list in here. But you're talking about trying to fit in all these six classes, at least a two hour, if you're paying at least a two hour class, and that's not even the free class option. So we're, we're going to have to fit in free classes too, because I want each subject to have a place where someone can go in a group of folks. Like you may not be a hundred percent serious. You may not have in brilliance yet but you're thinking about doing in brilliance and so you're you just want basic information you don't want to actually do anything and hardcore learn in brilliance so you're just kind of curious and want to know that's where the free class comes in but for those who have purchased in brilliance and they're pulling their hair out and you can't figure it out or you want more tricks and tips to better use and utilize your in brilliance well that's where your paid class comes in okay so that's the difference between the two all right and so we got to get all of this schedule and balanced out so i would love to do tumblers i would love to do tumblers uh, but we also need to make sure that the chemicals can come on ship on board uh, which i'll have to clear that through customs and i have to pre-submit this information to carnival and i have to give them a class schedule so saying all of that i would love to have tumblers i was also talking to uh, another viewer in here about quilting classes i would love to have quilting classes right now the schedule is getting so packed i'm not sure what we'll be able to offer you know so 
what I may do is, and who, how many did I say is in here? Not sure how many is in here, but I'm going to let y'all in on a secret. All right. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to talk low so that not too many people know about it. And you know, we're going to keep this between us. All right. So yeah, we're doing the cruise May, 2020, but it's some people that can't do cruises and they scared of the water or whatever. So what we going to do is we're going to have an all inclusive resort event the next time. Don't tell anybody that I told you that. And we'll probably be able to do more classes with that one. So at any rate, that's in the plans. <laughs> that's in the plans. So, um, you know what, if you are in the chat and you think that you got a good idea on how to schedule classes, or you want to give me your two cents on the classes and you don't want to put it in the chat, then shoot me an email. Let me know what you think, um, about like maybe half a day of classes during shore excursions. Um, and then, you know, the other half, if a person wants to go shore excursion, they can, I don't, I don't know, you know, and I really, Again, uh, some folks could care less about going ashore and some folks there, that's what they're going to be on that cruise for. So that's why I really want to know what everyone thinks about that. All right. Um, junk drawer of nonsense and know it all says I upgraded to the baby lock EMP six from a single needle. I would like to make a home business, but I am unsure how to price out my work. How do you figure out how to price left chest and baseball caps? Um, left chest and baseball caps. I basically me personally. All right. Now what I will suggest is go online or check with some local embroiderers. They don't have to know that you're doing embroidery and say, Hey, you know, I was wondering how much a left chest logo is on a shirt and I want a matching ball cap. How much is that? And see what they say. Some of them will say it depends on the design. If they say that, then that's letting you know that they probably are basing their price on stitch count. Okay, so if there's a design and it's 25,000 stitches, we generally, me personally, okay, this is my pricing and I'm going based off of uh, comparing industrial and usually home embroiderers and trying to meet somewhere in the middle or a little below. Um, I try and base my embroidery price a, thou a dollar per thousand stitches. So if it's 25,000 stitches, it's $25. I don't care if it's on a shirt or on a hat or whatever. All right. So that's kind of my pricing strategy. Um, it depends on entirely up to you. And I have a minimum. I won't do any work unless my minimum price is met. I don't care what I'm embroidering. So there's, um, you know, some wiggle room to play with and you have to make that decision. But what I definitely would suggest is check some of your local pricing first before you make a hardcore decision on what route you want to take. Um, Miss Ethel Smith, Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. What does that say? Oh, Shamina has a balcony. That's what's up, girl. That's what's up. <laughs> Maria says you tried to look at the Amazon storefront, but couldn't get it to open up past the page with the play pen. Play pen? I don't know about a play pen. Okay, we'll figure that out. Um, Miss Ethel Smith says we can do both if possible. Okay. Shamina, I wouldn't mind. I'll take a class the first night. I'm going to network and learn all I can and having a good time crafting. I binge on crafting seriously. Ronnie's rep says offer classes whenever possible. I'm going on the cruise for the crafting. You will not be able to work around everyone's likes or dislikes. Dorothy Gaston says one or two classes on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is fine with me. I love this feedback. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it because when I tell y'all I've been stressing over this class schedule, I've been stressing over this class schedule. And I do have another vendor that's, uh, I mean, another instructor that wants to teach soap making as well. So that's another one I forgot to mention. So tumblers can be put in there and we might as well add tumblers because the whole thing is, that's why it's called custom craft cruise because the whole point of this cruise and the classes that are involved is it's only for folks who are doing custom crafts for people. So custom, meaning whether that's embroidery, whether that's vinyl, whether that's t-shirts, whether that's, um, you know, like she said, soap making in a way kind of is custom, not quite, but close enough. Um, and tumblers are definitely custom because you're putting like those, uh, crayon, Crayola tumblers are my absolute fave. 
um, and they have the teacher's names on them. You know what I'm saying? So that's a custom craft. So that's the whole point. We wanted um, quilting. We wanted uh, crochet and knitting. We wanted that too, but I'm just trying to tell y'all, it's just making sure that, say for instance, I don't have two classes going on at the same time and you wanted to learn soap making and tumblers and now you're mad at me because you, you can't take both <laughs> at the same time. So that's why I'm like, we're going to do small this time. But when we do the next event that you and I talked about, um, then it'll be more classes available and a lot more fun. So that's what I'm excited. Ethel Smith says, put the classes out there and get a poll. Not a bad idea, especially since I have a newsletter. We have over 200 folks that subscribe to the newsletter alone. That's not including the people who have already signed up for the cruise. Um, and who were just curious about the cruise, but they didn't want to be on the newsletter. So I'll have to shoot that out on the newsletter. I think that would be cool. Debbie Kidd says, any idea on the cost of the paid classes? I have an idea. I have an idea, but eh, I haven't really said anything yet because there's going to be a difference in price, um, mainly because of what is involved with each class. So that I will let you know up front. For instance, um, so what pro is going to be a class um, and you don't have to, I don't have to do anything other than bring my laptop, which I was going to do anyway, um, to teach So What Pro, all right? So there's no, um, there's no equipment, nothing like that. And usually people bring their laptops on board or something along those lines. So if you're going to take the class, you will need to bring your laptop, all right? So that being the case, the cost of that class won't be quite as much, you know, versus the vinyl class that she's going to be teaching, we have to get brother scanning cuts, get our hands on some brother scanning cuts and bring them aboard. We already have some. Um, we're going to have to get our hands on um, silhouettes, bring them on board. We have to get vinyl. She's going to have to bring on supplies and stuff. All of that is going to have to be shipped ahead of time, a week ahead of time down to Florida I'm probably gonna have to go down two days early just to make sure that this stuff clears customs because if the stuff isn't cleared through customs by 4 p.m. when it's time to set sail, it's gonna be left on the dock. They're not putting it on the ship until customs has gone through all of that stuff, y'all. This is like some real serious stuff um, I'm finding out. I didn't realize it was that big of a deal, but you're talking about selling internationally, so they have to check everything. So that being the case, the cost is higher with that okay the cost is going to be higher with that class because we got to cover the cost of shipping customs blah 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 blah, blah. it's not going to be astronomical um but there's going to be a higher price point with that one um so we'll have to see how that goes um and again i'll i'll have a better idea of class prices once i get um a schedule, more of a schedule in place and determine the class course. Okay. So I need to know that too, from each instructor, what time frame they're also looking at needing to teach this class, because I'm going to have to compensate them based on, uh, the time frame. So if you're talking about an hour or two hours, then, you know, we have to be, uh, careful with what we're offering to these folks. So, it's a lot, you know, I, you know, when I started doing this, I was like, eh, it's cruise, no big deal. Let's just have a couple of teachers, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it ain't gonna be, I was wrong. I was so wrong. It's crazy how wrong <laughs> I completely under, under evaluated what all was going to be involved with putting this together. But fortunately I have a guardian angel of sorts who has done this before and she has been invaluable in helping me make sure to learn from her mistakes that she and her company made when she put her cruise together last year actually a crafting cruise and make sure that I don't make some of those same mistakes so that has been a huge blessing for me I'm just so super excited about that so um, that's what we're going with that Lupe you asked about your nine-year-old daughter of course she is more than welcome to join us on this cruise there far as I mean now I will say this 
This is a carnival cruise. This is a legitimate, straight out cruise, all right? What has happened is in order to do the custom craft cruise part, we have, uh, for lack of better words, hijacked part of the cabins on the ship. And those are set aside for us, okay? So up until May the 4th, for now, May the 4th, what she's doing is she is getting Carnival to bracket off groups of cabins for us, for just custom craft cruises only. So what's going to happen is whenever you book a cruise, all of us will be all in about the same area of the ship, not down in the bow belly of the ship. We're going to be, you know, all in a group near each other, which is really cool. I'm super excited about that. So what that basically translates is the earlier that you pay the 150 deposit, the greater the chances that you'll be staying right around the rest of us, okay? So if you don't do the 150 deposit and say you decide you want to do the 150 deposit in October or December because the first uh, 150 has to be paid by January 20th, if I'm not mistaken. That's when that first deposit really is due if you do $25 you don't have to do the 150 till January which is awesome you're, you're saving your money um but if you wait till January chances are a lot of those rooms that are for other people booking this exact same cruise but not through custom craft cruises they're just going on a cruise they're not going for crafts then um they could be taking up the extra rooms that we couldn't get set aside because no one asked for those rooms ahead of time. You see what I'm saying? So for right now, she's she gets rooms in groups of 20. So every time the 20 fills, she gets another group of 20. And when that fills, she gets another group of 20. So that's how it's been going. Um, but folks within the last couple of weeks have like stopped. No one has called um, to book anything, which is fine. No issues because we got until May the 4th. Um, but the sooner you can get that in, the better and the more likelihood that you'll be right around in the same area. Okay. So I'm going back to Lupe. I'm saying all of that to say, yes, we will all be in a certain group and we will all be pretty much together in one area, but there will be other travelers, regular crews going folks that are going to be on the ship. She's nine years old perfect candidate to go on a cruise i'm not saying she can't go just be careful and make sure that you know it's not just us that's on this cruise so keep an eye out for her and of course your hoop group family as long as we know who the kid who your daughter is you know we all can make sure that we're together and that she's not separated from the rest of us but you definitely will want to keep an eye on her and she's welcome to join you with the classes like say for instance if you pay for a class you don't have to pay for her to go to the class um, so that we make sure that she's with you if you are the only caretaker for her on the ship. So just throwing that out there to let you know that we do care about anyone that you bring with you on this trip. All right. And to clear something else, I don't know why people are asking husbands and spouses can go on this cruise. Other people that you're related to or may want to cruise with you, your cousin, your best friend, whomever you so choose to bring on this cruise, you're more than welcome to bring whomever you want on the cruise. They don't have to take classes. They, they're they not required to come to any of the crafting events at all. I can't, I'm not going to, heck, if you come on the cruise, I can't force you to go to any of the crafting events either. That's entirely voluntary. So you're more than welcome to take the cruise just to be with everybody and not necessarily take any crafting classes. All right. So that's I want to put that out there. This isn't, it's not like I have the entire ship locked down. Not yet. <laughs> I was hoping we could get that many folks, but um, I doubt we'll probably crest or peak out somewhere about 150, 200 folks the way it's been looking. We'll see how it goes. But for right now, no, we're nowhere close to 2,500 people signing up for this cruise. That would have been nice, but no, not quite. <laughs> so Miss Debbie Kidd, um, thank you, Pamela Hill. I appreciate you letting me know about that one-on-one -on -one right there. Um, but definitely you could bring your daughter, Miss Debbie Kidd. I'll let you know um, sooner rather than later about what I'm thinking on cost of classes. Um, Maria, yeah, that will be, I think that the 
and that other idea is going to be a much better outcome honestly um it's just we we need to find what from what my booking agent told me there are very few of those in the u.s go figure I don't know why they don't have all inclusives like that in the U.S. It's like unheard of in a way. There's a few, but not a lot of them. So we want to find one that's affordable, that's uh, going to embrace us. And she gave me the name of a couple that are out of the country, just out of the country, um, that would be more than welcoming that we could look at. And I'll throw that out there when the time comes. But for right now, I have got to get over this cruise hump first and go through this experience so that I'll be better rounded uh, and experience with uh, whatever we choose to do the next time. So, and I'm hoping we'll do another cruise after this actually, and, and maybe a little bit longer, a day or two longer, but for right now, you know, that's how we're uh, going with it. Glenn, everyone, you're making black bordered patches. Let's not talk about that, Glenn. Oh my God. I have so many patches I need to be doing right now. It's sad. <laughs> I was going to actually do patches. I was, okay. So my thought for the video tonight was pillow, eh, maybe patches. Well, I got to do patches anyway, so I could do that or the puckering and which we haven't even touched puckering yet. So we got to get into it. Um, do I need to worry if I use a black Sharpie around the edges, bleeding on the fabric when washing, etc.? Yes, you do. So Glenn, what I would suggest is, um, I know Madeira has them, M-A-D-E-I-R-A. -E Madeira has um, markers that are fabric markers that are made for embroidery to touch up. And the bleeding on those are way less likely. So you may want to check Madeira and see if you can find those. Um, and I'll try and put a link somewhere, maybe in the description below. Um, but that's an option, but Sharpies are known to bleed. Um, now you may can do a laundry Sharpie. They do sell laundry markers, uh, Sharpie version, then that may work better. I don't know. I have, excuse me. I've never tried it, but you can definitely give that a shot and see how it goes. Try it on like a junk patch. Like if you might've messed up on a patch, try it on that one first before you use it on one that you're actually going to sell and try to wash it, see how it works. The junk drawer of nonsense says, thank you. You're welcome. Ethel Smith says, put the classes out there and get a poll on them. We will do that. Carol Coleman, we have to make the choice ourselves. That is correct. You definitely do. And hey, Miss Carol Coleman, how are you? Maria says, yay, you made it just in time. Well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you uh, being in here with the Baby's Booty Group. We love having you. Jody S says, hi, E from Virginia. Welcome from Virginia. Virginia is awesome. Miss Kathy asks, can you use So What Pro offline? You sure can, Miss Kathy. So What Pro is a complete standalone program on your computer that you do not need the internet for, which I am super excited, excited about for using that on the ship because Cricut is going to be difficult. You have to have the internet to use it, which is why we're not, you know, too keen on using the Cricut um, and having Cricut classes. So that's why we're not doing any. Cause you got to have the internet and yes, there's internet on the ship Internet on the ship is expensive. So we we're like leaning so far away from that. It's crazy. Glenn F I'm not going on the cruise, but if you need help organizing or anything, let me know. Glenn, be careful what you ask for. Uh, Shamina says everyone <laughs> won't be able to make every class. That's fine. There's a large variety in selection. Everyone gets choices of what they would like to do and what times are available. Just choose one. And and that's true. But I do want to be accommodating. And that's the whole point in, you know, putting this together is so that it's well organized, so that folks can make their choices and figure out what they're going to do. Also, she also, uh, the booking agent also mentioned dinner arrangements and what dinner you would like to choose to go on. Ah, I forgot to, um, I forgot what we came up with, but I told her what dinner I chose the dinner time frame, Cause she said that we could also all possibly dine together if anyone was interested in that. 
So uh, we'll have to get, I'll put that on the frequently asked question section of the website. And I really need to put that down here somewhere so that folks can know to check that out. Um, Janet McKinney need to go. Good night. Oh, good night, Miss Janet McKinney. I'm glad you were here. Thank you for joining us. I saw we. Maria says, I didn't know all of that stuff had to be inspected by customs. Yes, honey. Yes, trust me. I didn't either. I didn't either, Jeff. Just, uh, Lord, if people bring their own scanning cuts or silhouettes, do they have to go through customs too? Yes. Yes, they do. I just, uh, that's why I just said, don't bring, don't bring it. We'll bring it. No point in you bringing yours. We'll bring those and let you just use them. I mean, that's about the only way that's going to work because I really don't want to put anybody else through that. Uh, because from what I understand, it's, it's a bit of a pain. So yeah, I got to check them into customs. Lupe says, thanks a lot. Eve, you're welcome. You are welcome. Sheila Chan says, Maria, I believe the answer is yes. In the past, when I went through customs, I declared expensive camera equipment or jewelry I had when leaving because if you did not, you might have to pay duty when returning. I didn't know it was because of duty, but I do know like I can't sell, we can't sell anything on the ship. <clears throat> Excuse me. So like for instance, uh, we will have so art classes and so what pro classes, you can't buy it while you're on the ship. You have to wait till we get back to us in order to purchase, uh, anything. I can't, we can't sell anything on the ship. So otherwise you'll have to pay duty. Kathy says, I'm so jealous. I can't make the cruise this year. It sounds like so much fun. Yeah, it, it will be. It is May of 2020. Um, and I do understand, which is why we're looking at the alternative for the next time. Emily Galloway. Hey, love, how are you? Thank you for joining us. I hope your baby is feeling a little bit better. If not, give her a big hug for me and a kiss on the forehead and let her know that uh, we hope she gets better soon. Satara says, hi team, Miss Satara. Hello, my love. How are you? Thank you for joining us this evening. Always a pleasure to have uh, you in here. Silhouette cameo is fun. I'm hearing that it is. And I've been lectured over and over by the silhouette teacher. So who knows? We might be getting some silhouette babies over here. <laughs> um, Let us see. Patches, embroidery, and designs. Hello, Eve. Pat in Memphis, Tennessee. Well, hello, Patches uh embroidery and designs how are you this evening thank you for joining us ross agul hello from the bahamas your videos are such a great help thank you i definitely appreciate that and we were just talking about selling your way in may of next year so who knows maybe we'll all get to meet you that would be cool <laughs> jody s says you used to live in richmond oh man that's not too terribly far from me a good ways but not too terribly far miss parker says Hi, Eve from Memphis. Enjoy these videos. Hello. No worries. Thank you for joining us, Miss Terry Ponce, because she said, sorry, she's late, but Miss Parker, hello. How are you? <laughs> um, Satara says you got two. Oh, man. So hopefully we'll bring some in because I'm telling you, having to use the internet with Cricket is a pain. All right, y'all. So let's finally talk puckers. I apologize for taking so long to get to this, but it's a very sensitive subject for a lot of folks right so let me grab my equipment and show you what i mean right so i took these hats to a embroiderer um local to me because this is a flex fit hat and it has structure to well not a lot of structure but it has some structure to the front of this hat um, and because of that, this hat isn't really friendly with my machine. I don't want to take the chance of any structure to the front of hats. So I use unstructured caps, the dad caps that are completely floppy like this is back here. And there's no stability up front. So by having that completely floppy fabric up front, it lets my embroidery machine have the fun that it wants without causing this type of mess. See, this is the type of mess that I usually get on my embroidery machine. I don't know how well you can see that pucker there on that hat. Uh, when I took it, the way it embroidered and it folded on itself, it caused a pucker. Now, generally, generally, this is on a hat and I wasn't really going to address the hat issue, but we can because it's, usually a simple remedy 
usually on a hat. If a hat puckers, a lot of times it's because it wasn't digitized properly for a hat, okay? So hats have to be digitized with their design from the inside out, all right? And that eliminates this puckering problem in most instances, okay? And especially being that this particular embroidery job was done at a location, they didn't digitize this. Um, I had it digitized. They don't claim liability for it, which is it's fine. I already knew. I wasn't really worried about it. But this was done um, off of a design I took to them. So if they had to digitize it and it turned out like this, then they would have to be liable for the way it turned out. But they didn't. So usually, again, with a hat, if you're dealing with puckers on a hat like this, nine times out of 10, it's either stabilization, which usually isn't that big of a deal with a hat. You can just use the tearaway stabilizer and they make a tearaway stabilizer for hats. I was going to grab it, but there's something sitting on it. Um, and it's thin and it's just a strip that you can put inside the hat. Um, making it super easy to embroider. Um, and it's usually tear away. So it's usually not a stabilization issue. Usually it's a digitizing issue and it has to be digitized inside out to help avoid that. But that's with a hat, all right? So hats are not what people do on an everyday basis, but what people do on an everyday basis is stretchy items usually is what causes the puckers okay so like this onesie for instance um my intent was to embroider on the onesie live so that you guys could see that but i had a job that was taking a little bit too long to embroider on so the machine is tied up at the moment but what tends to happen with these onesies that causes the embroidery to pucker one of a couple is several things, several factors that are generally involved with that. With onesies, this fabric is super stretchy. I mean, that's the whole point. We got to stretch it over baby's head and over their little fat tummies and, you know, get it to where it's comfortable for them. Um, and sometimes they've outgrown it a little bit and we still squeeze them in it and that's understandable. But with that stretchy fabric, people have a tendency to hoop it and hoop it too tightly to where it stretches when they put it in the hoop, okay? So that will cause a pucker because if you embroider on it, and what my other plan was, was to put a piece of tape so that you could see how that looked. And of course, I don't have the tape in here with me. I'm gonna see if it'll work with this. But what generally happens is that tape, um, or the embroidery rather, if you stretch it, and then you put that in place. Well, when it comes back there, yeah, no, it's not gonna work. When you embroider on there and it relaxes back, it's going to pucker around the embroidery where it relaxes back onto the onesie, okay? So you wanna keep that in mind and make sure that you're not stretching the onesie. So when I mentioned that to a um, person who reached out to me about the puckering, on her onesie and she says well um thank you miss carol coleman i appreciate the uh super chat thank you very much always appreciative of your generosity and support of our channel and it always goes to support our channel thank you very very much for that i um i'm always amazed at the support that i receive from from you guys it's always heartwarming so i appreciate that thank you ma'am um one of the things that uh, she mentioned was I did not hoop the onesie. So there's no way that I could have stretched it because I didn't hoop it. And I told her, I says, well, did you smooth it out? Because she said she used spray adhesive on um, cutaway stabilizer on, I guess, a fast frame, I'm assuming. Um, and she said, she smoothed it onto the hoop. Well, guess what? When you smooth something, if you look at it while you're smoothing it, it's giving it a stretch, just a light stretch, but it's still a stretch. So what I told her is place the onesie on the hoop as much as you possibly can. Just make sure, look at it, feel it, adjust it to where it's just, it's just laying there. It's not stretched. It's not smooth. And what you can do is pat it 
you know, just lightly pat it to get it to adhere to whatever spray adhesive she might have been using or or um, uh, the adhesive uh, stabilizer. She could use that too, but just lightly pat it to keep it from stretching any at all. Okay, so that is usually your main culprit for puckers is the stretch. Okay. That stretch is an enemy <laughs> to everyone that's doing embroidery. Um, and if you notice, the majority of the time when you get puckering, generally it's on something that's stretchy, okay? So the other culprit that I've found, even if you don't stretch the onesie when you put it on the hoop, even if it's just placed gently and there's no stretching whatsoever, the embroidery that you're putting on the onesie is too dense for the onesie. This is soft fabric, soft, stretchy, you know, gentle fabric. Uh, T-shirt fabric is pretty much the same way, especially if you're using uh, lightweight T-shirts, okay? That's why generally when I do T-shirts and sell them, they're the heavyweight T-shirts. The reason I use heavyweight is because they're going to be able to withstand years of abuse so i use the heavyweight for my bling i use it for my vinyl definitely use it for embroidery if i embroider on it at all all right so generally when customers come to me saying okay well i have this t-shirt and i want my logo embroidered on it i steer them clear of doing embroidery on t-shirts me personally i let them know you might not want to embroider on a t-shirt um, and t-shirts are ba mainly used for screen printing or vinyl or even heat transfer, sublimation, something like that, not for the embroidery. Okay. So embroidery is, is kind of heavy and it's adding extra stitches to the fabric. So you have to make sure not only that you're stabilizing it well to compensate that fabric for all that extra weight that you're adding to it, but you want to make sure that the density of the embroidery that you're putting on it is comparable to the fabric and the stabilizer that you're putting it on okay so i know that's a lot that i'm um that's a lot that i'm throwing on you but i'm trying to think of a good analogy to let you know how that could come together so um i don't know say for instance when you're looking at a delicate spider web i guess and you have the difference between like a little mosquito that falls into the net it's the web it's really easy it doesn't tear up the web too bad but let one of those big fat carpenter bees fly in there nine times out of ten carpenter bee ain't gonna get stuck too terribly bad especially if it's a smaller web because it's too lightweight the web is too lightweight to hold him down that's just a whole lot going into that web well likewise when you're doing lightweight embroidery on these onesies you kind of want to leave the design a lightweight design, not something that's super heavy uh, with a lot of stitches. And I wish I had of um, posted the picture that the um, that the viewer sent to me because it was a design of a girl, um, and it kind of put me in the mind of Rainbow Bright, but it wasn't Rainbow Bright. But it was a girl. She was kind of thin, and she had the striped socks on but it was more of an outline of her and then her hair was filled in. The majority of the puckers was where her hair was because there was just so many stitches up there to fill in her hair. Whereas her arms and her socks, just a little bit of puckering around the stripes on her socks where the socks were filled in. But for the most part, there wasn't very much puckering around the outline and the smaller details. So the thicker the embroidery on the onesie, the more pucker. So that's why usually when it comes to doing, you see embroidery on onesies, a lot of times people use applique. Why do they use applique? Because it fills in a whole area that allows you to avoid filling that area in with stitches. You're just covering that area with fabric and it compensates for all of those stitches that would normally be filled in in that area. And it's lightweight for the garment that you're embroidering it on. So if you're doing a t-shirt, applique would be the better um, choice if you're absolutely adamant, your customer is adamant on doing embroidery on a t-shirt or a onesie, same thing. Applique is your better option, especially if it's, especially if it's not a lightweight 
t-shirt. I mean, not a heavy t-shirt, rather. The heavier the t-shirt, you can, you can add more stitches to that. But these lightweight onesies, these are not heavy at all, you know. So you want to go with a lighter density design uh, or applique. That also helps you avoid puckering. Also, you want to make sure that you're using the correct needle with your embroidery. So if you're using uh, a regular sewing, a regular embroidery needle with these stretch t-shirts or onesies, then you're going to have holes and possibly puckering okay so you want to make sure that you're using a stretchy needle a ballpoint needle it's either called ballpoint needle or stretch needle or jersey knit needle either one of the three they're still the same thing it just means that the point of the needle is rounded ever so slightly you can't really see it with your eye under a microscope you can but just naked eye is really difficult to see but the point of the needle is rounded so that it doesn't tear through the gentle threads of jersey knit fabric or stretchy knit fabric, okay? So what it basically does is pushes the fibers apart instead of tearing through them, okay? So things like jeans or cotton, you know, those type fabrics don't stretch as much, so you don't have to use uh, the rounded needle with those. But with this jersey knit or the onesies or the t-shirts, or the polo shirts, they have a stretch too. You want to switch to that jersey needle. That also helps you avoid puckering, all right? So think on whenever you decide to do your next project and you want to avoid puckering with these stretchy shirts, whether it be a polo with the left chest logo or a t-shirt and somebody really wants to have that logo on their t-shirt or a onesie with the baby's name or whatever the case it is that you decide to put on the onesie, make sure... First of all, the weight of the onesie or the weight of the shirt. You know, if it's a lightweight then, and you have a heavier weight design, then you want to bump up your stabilizer that's going on the back of that design because you want to beef up the fabric and give that fabric some structure to keep it from puckering and help it stay as straight as possible. So that's why cutaway stabilizer is, you know, definitely beneficial for using whenever you are embroidering on uh, onesies or on t-shirts and stuff like that. Now, sweatshirts are a little bit thicker. They're stretchy too, but you can get away with probably a lighter weight stabilizer behind that on an embroidery design because it's a light, it's a heavier fabric, excuse me. So it's thicker, it's heavier, and it can take more abuse and more threads. Um, and I've seen a lot of debates on uh, a lot of embroidery groups and they're saying, well, just because it's uh, on a shirt or whatever the case may be, I use tearaway. I don't ever use cutaway and my embroidery is fine. Okay. I mean, if you're willing to take that chance, go right ahead. And if it works for you, it works for you. However, the majority consensus across the embroidery board is you use cutaway stabilizer uh, behind any garment that you use it on because you want it to not stretch anymore. Um, or there is a performance stabilizer that you can purchase from some companies. They have a performance stabilizer that goes on stretchy things that you can use and that helps stabilize it behind a stretchy uh, garment and it flows with it for like gymnasts or um, performers or something like that where they have to have a stretch around their stuff. Uh, so that's an option with those guys, but you still want to use your jersey knit. You still want to not stretch it when it's in the hoop same principle same everything else applies it's just that you can use a performance stabilizer behind it uh, with that type of embroidery right so i just wanted to cover that information in general because puckering is a huge disappointing problem especially if you're not in the habit of testing your embroidery designs prior to you know embroidering on something the customer brings you because that's part of the reason why I prefer to purchase whatever the item is that the embroidery is going on. So say for instance, um, I just recently had an order for a onesie. It was vinyl, but I still chose to purchase the onesie myself. First of all, I'm going to try and find a better price because your customer probably isn't going to have access to wholesale uh, blanks like we do. Okay. So that also helps you. Second of all, if you do mess up or if it does pucker or if it does cut a hole in it or whatever the case may be you can easily go purchase another replace it customer doesn't even know they don't have to know 
and there you give them their stuff and they're fine all right so that's uh one of the other reasons why i choose to purchase myself so i get the onesies um or the t-shirts or whatever and then embroider on it and then that way if there's an issue i don't have to worry about um replacing it i can just go ahead and do that uh but don't ever fret if there is a pucker sometimes we see the pucker and we freak out and have an issue and the customer doesn't even notice it so sometimes if it's not bad it's just a light pucker you might can get away with the customer seeing and they don't even care they're so happy because they have what they want on the item and it doesn't bother them they don't notice it but we can be some of the biggest critics of ourselves and i know me personally i refuse to give anything that's less than my best uh, because it's very frustrating to me just like this hat you know i let the customer know i don't like the way this turned out um we may need to go a little bit bigger on the wording or eliminate the wording altogether because this particular design was shrunk so that it could go on the hat versus their regular design which is a lot bigger than this um so i let them know ahead of time you know and if they're if they see it and they're like you know what no i'm fine with it i'm cool with it whatever the case may be then we go with it but if they look at it and they're like you know what no i don't like that you know let, what what can we do about fixing it then i'll go through the process of finding another hat which i know where these come from um and we'll see about adjusting the design and getting it to turn out better than what it did although i didn't do this but i'm still responsible for it because i'm the one that accepted the job and farmed it out to someone else so that being said um maria says i've had trouble with the design being too dense the area with the design felt way too hard for a baby to wear yes you definitely uh, want to keep that in mind and when you're looking for designs to go on the baby onesie um, especially if you're having it digitized like I digitize a lot of things myself so I'll take out those foundation stitches um, and eliminate them all together because usually when a design is digitized there's foundation stitches that are laid first all right and that's to help make sure that the design is good and sound and that the stitches don't come apart and all that cool stuff well you don't absolutely have to have those and when you're embroidering on something lightweight you can if you know how to digitize you can eliminate those starting stitches and you know lighten some of the density behind the item that you're embroidering on um, alternatively again you can use applique in the area where there's more stitching uh, and it does prove to be a lot more helpful. Sharon Davenport says, hello from Northeast Texas. Haven't been able to catch a live in a long time. Yes, I did a left chest um, yesterday and had a little pucker, but customer couldn't even see it after I pointed it out. And a lot of times that's what I found to be the uh, situation when I'm working with customers. I can give them stuff and sometimes they're like, you know, okay it looks great i love it i'm happy and i'm sitting here like oh lord you just don't know do you um but that's how um critical we can be sometimes so but the thing is just use caution with this type of material it's a lot of fun to work with it's absolutely beautiful when it's done especially for the babies oh my gosh um and then you can go to um let me see if this is it i think it is you can go to Walmart and you can purchase uh, this cloud stuff. I, they call it cloud cover or whatever the case may be. Uh, but it's almost like a, um, uh, what is the name of that stuff? Can't think right now because it's for sewing, interfacing. It's almost like an interfacing, a really, really lightweight interfacing. And this isn't the right one. I have one that's softer than this. Um, see if this is it nope that ain't it either but it's an interfacing very similar to this you can purchase it at walmart on the boat if your walmart sells fabric um on the boat you usually can find this in the section with the interfacing it's rolled up and just go through and feel for the softest one not the back where the dots are because you you can feel the glue dots but on the front, just see how soft it is. See if it's something that you would, you know, brush against your, your skin. And if it's soft enough, then you can use this to cover the back of the embroidery 
behind the uh, onesie on the back of the embroidery on in the onesie and use it to make it softer for the baby to wear up against uh, its skin. So that's also an option as well. A lot of people um, want to know what that stuff is, where they can find it. Walmart, you can go to Joann's and just ask for interfacing, but just find the softest one that you can find. And that's pretty much all it is, is interfacing. It's just the softer one. So at any rate, you guys, I appreciate you joining me. It's 930. If you have any parting questions for me, you can go ahead and put that in the chat below. Again, I would appreciate it if you could hit the like button while you're here. Um, if you're on your phone, you can click the X where it says live chat on your right hand side. If you're on an Android device, it'll close out your live chat and then you'll see the like or dislike button. Click the one that applies to you and then you can hit live chat and come right back into the live chat and won't miss a beat. Um, also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We get really close. We're like 500 shy of 14,000 subscribers. I'm still tripping that our number is that high. I'm super excited. Very grateful to you guys for being subscribers and um, tuning in to see us on Sundays. It has been a pleasure. And if you are in embroidery and wish to share uh, pictures of your work or get encouragement or, you know, just say hi to the group and, and everyone that's in there, you can join the Hoop group. And that information is right here below. You just go to my website, thebabiesbooty.com and click on join the hoop group and you can pop right in. We'll get you approved and you can start posting right away and let us know who you are and just say hi. We have a lot of fun. Um, whenever we can get folks all going and jazzed up in the group, it's a lot of fun. Um, and we also uh, let you know of sales that are going on. We also discuss um, websites where they may be designs that are given for free um, and also tips and tricks and all kinds of stuff go on in the hoop group and we appreciate everyone that's in there Samantha s you had a quick question and it was how low do you place a design on a baseball cap so with the baseball hats um, or any of these type of caps there's no set standard um now i know for myself and this again this is a professional done hat it was done on a tajima actually um and even with my brother machine you have this roughly inch that's right here between the design and the brim of the hat now of course you don't want to embroider on the brim of the hat um there is really no way to embroider on the brim of the hat that uh anytime you see a hat with embroidery on the brim. The embroidery was done prior to the brim being put together. That's why that embroidery is able to be there. Um, and that's a secret inside tip from uh, someone whom I know that used to uh, do hats with the embroidery on the brim. But at any rate, um, but if you do have a, uh, like for instance, a single needle flatbed machine, you can press the surface of the hat down flat and you can get pretty close to the brim if you embroider on your hats that way. Again, there's no set rule per se, but you definitely want to get as low as your machine will possibly let you because otherwise this design would be much higher um, and it wouldn't quite look right uh, up higher on the crest of this hat up there. So um, get as low as you possibly can, um, but you don't want to get so low that you you know, hit this brim because you will break a needle if you hit that, all right? And you definitely want to be out of the way of the sweat band. So make sure you pull your sweat band down out of the way and uh, get your hat where you can embroider on it. But generally, most of my designs are right at an inch, three quarters of an inch up from the brim. There's no set rule on that. Um, Patty Murphy says, hope to meet you in Owensboro. Well, I hope so as well. That would be totally awesome. And if I am there and you do see me, please feel free to come up, say hi. I have no qualms with folks coming up to me um, and speaking. I enjoy it. I don't mind giving hugs and saying, hey, um, there's many folks that can testify to that. Um, I am not on any kind of high horse or anything like that. I'm just a regular person who loves the folks who love the same things I do. So 
I have no issues with you coming uh, by and saying hello. Maria says, thank you again, Eve, for sharing your precious time with us. Take care of yourself so you don't get so worn out. You have to keep your health up for this cruise. I know that's right, girl. God bless you and good night all. And to that end, definitely for sure, I'm not overdoing it. I've been trying to step back and take one day at a time. So if you reach out and I don't get to you right away, please be patient because there is a lot going on around here. Uh, and I do have to take it one step at a time. So I'm looking forward to all of those who choose to go on our crafting cruise. If you have any questions about the crafting cruise, it's at www.customcraftcruise.com. Custom, C-U-S-T-O-M, craft, C-R-A-F-T, cruise, C-R-U-I-S-E.com. That should have been down here somewhere. It's not, it will be next time though. Um, so if you have any questions, there's frequently asked questions there. There's a place to sign up for the newsletter and we do uh, keep you updated as frequently as we have updates. Um, so we look forward to you guys joining there. And um, otherwise, I hope you all have a good night. I appreciate you tuning in and look forward to seeing you next Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at the Baby's Booty. We went over a little bit, but it was fun and I appreciate the bell ringing for the new baby so I look forward to seeing you all next week and until the next time we see you all we want you to have happy embroidering you guys have a great night and have a wonderful rest to your week bye <laughs>